there's a smell in the air, and for once, it's not Miguel's hair product. <laughs> it's the crisp, energizing scent of democracy, which can mean only one thing. It's federal election season. <laughs> And while it's always fun to hear slogans generated by whichever party staffer was closest to a thesaurus, <laughs> voting can be kind of a pain. The lines are long, and there's a good chance you're doing it in a school gymnasium, the site of your greatest humiliations. <laughs> and yet somehow, when you stuff that ballot into a box guarded by an old person, it all feels worth it. <laughs> but what if the biggest election issue has nothing to do with the parties or their platforms at all? I'm talking, of course, about foreign election interference and its favorite weapon, fake news. Minister of Foreign Affairs Christia Freeland had this to say about its threat to our upcoming election. Interference is very likely. Um, and we think there has probably already, there have probably already been efforts uh, by malign foreign actors uh, to disrupt our democracy. Pretty likely. Wow. You're probably asking, why would a hostile foreign power want to interfere in the elections of a little old second biggest country resource rich G7 economy like Canada? <laughs> the goal of fake news isn't to get a specific person elected. It's about creating discord and apathy to undermine faith in democratic institutions. Though sometimes those things come together in one moist package. <laughs> But fret not, potential voters, the Beaverton has got your back with our handy-dandy guide to spotting fake news. Okay, okay. First things first, in order to spot fake news, you need to be media literate. For instance, if your primary source of news is us, that's a sign you're not media literate. <laughs> Seriously, please stop doing please. that. An actual news broadcast is on a half an hour from now. Watch that. Please. Second, fake news thrives on social media, and social media thrives on not caring about that. So the next time you're logged on, treat any piece of news you see with the same skepticism you would a guy in a bar who says you can crash on his boat. <laughs> Next, check who wrote the article, then Google them. If their bio says, destroy globalism, I'm gonna say take that one off your bookmark list. <laughs> and before you share a story, check to see if it makes use of sources. As a general rule, journalism should adhere to the same standards as a grade six book report. <laughs> and while you're at it, check the URL. The webpage might say CBS News, but if the address is something like cbs.moldova.hornyhousewives.org, <laughs> There's a good chance it's fake news. <laughs> Listen, the real CBS hasn't done a horny housewife story in years. If this sounds like a lot to remember, don't worry. We have set up some of our own URLs you can go to that offer a few more tools to help you spot fake news. The best part, these URLs are scientifically proven to attract every specific generation. So feel free to pass them on to your idiot friends, parents, or kids who might need a little help recognizing misinformation. <laughs> First up, the demographic who are seven times more likely to fall for fake news and a million times more likely to be watching this on television. <laughs> Baby boomers. Hey, Hepcats, turn down that Grand Funk Railroad LP, hike up those khakis, and boogie on over to handsomemansbridge.com. <laughs> All right. Next up, Gen X. Sup? Turn down that Pearl Jam CD, hike up your skate shorts, and schwing on over to Kurt Cobain Memorial Pizza dot pizza. Or whatever. Ooh, millennial time. Here's the tea. Staying woke is like a huge mood, so turn down your SoundCloud, hike up those juicy sweats, and bounce on over to Yas. Yeah, That's Yas with five A's. Full disclosure, they all link to the media literacy site Apathy is Boring, which it totally is, so check it out, or else. Now, of course, if you're from Generation Z, all this media literacy stuff is pretty much second nature to you. But you can help. Take some time to pass on your skills to an old. <laughs> yeah, think of it as helping a parent set up their Wi-Fi password for democracy. <laughs> Because until we lower the minimum and also the maximum voting age to 16, fake news is a threat to us all. Mm -hmm. did, did we just save the election? I think we just did. <laughs> Fist bump. No, I'm not there yet, Miguel. Someday, why would I ask? Yeah. Get into it. The Beaverton. Only on CTV.